Bob, it's great to have you back on the show. Great to see you, Morgan. Um, so I actually want to start with a macro question before I drill down on the earnings specifically, and that is we also got the first read on Q1 GDP this, this morning, which was actually a, an unexpected negative 1.4 percent. A lot is being made of the fact that we've seen an inventory subtraction, the fact that you're seeing pressure from net trade in the quarter as well, and, and this idea that this is not leading to a recession, but it's just a lot of noise around some of the supply chain and transportation bottlenecks that we have seen throughout this pandemic from the lens of C.H. Robinson. And how is that playing out for you? Yeah, I would I would share that point of view. You know, I think there's been a lot of talk in the media here as of late as, as you know, potentially transportation going into a, a transport recession. And frankly, we just haven't seen that. Um, you know, we look at things both domestically and globally and still see you know, the opportunity for a vibrant market moving forward. The consumer seems strong. You know, manufacturing uh, remains strong. So we see positive signs ahead. Yeah. So in terms of this debate around a freight recession, the fact that you're not seeing it, I mean, one of the things you are you did talk about and, and you did post within your results was um, the strength in truckload and specifically where contracts are concerned. I mean, we've seen spot rates for truckload uh, come off in recent weeks, but contracting seems to be very strong. Is that is that the trend that you expect to carry out through the year as we see, a, dare I say, return to normal? Yeah, I think that's a natural progression of the cycle. If you think about the con if in normal times, about 85 percent of truckload freight moves under contracts. The freight that moves in the spot market is either where there's, you know, kind of unforeseen demand or unmet capacity. And we know that, you know, the routing guides and the contracts have not been holding up all that well over the course of the past couple of years. So shippers do what they do. They reprice, they get substitutions, they get carriers that are able to honor commitments perhaps at a higher price point. And that takes freight out of the spot market, which leads to some of those declines. And we have seen the decline in the spot market over the course of the past couple of months. But I feel like we're starting to kind of reach the bottom, at least in the in the near term. And, and I think we'll see some resistance. So the fact that we're seeing a wave of China lockdowns in recent weeks, uh, expectation that that could lead to another increase in some of the bottlenecks. And if so, what does that mean for the freight forwarding business at C.H. Robinson? Yeah, I think that China is the big question for us right now in terms of both the breadth of, of the lockdowns as well as as well as the length of the lockdowns. And, you know, I kind of think back to the beginning of the pandemic and, and what happened, right? Unfortunately, you know, the economy in China kind of came to a halt. There were all sorts of backlogs and then this, you know, bullwhip of, of demand that came in the third quarter of, of 2020. And so we've seen kind of how long that's taken to unwind. And, and that happened at a time where the ports were kind of operating as normal. We still have backlogs at the ports right now. And so if the lockdowns in China remain for the next several weeks or in the months, you know, there is just simply going to be a tremendous amount of demand that's going to be pent up and, and will hit the shores of, of the U.S. towards the middle of the back half of the year. So that's one piece of the puzzle. Another one is this conflict in Ukraine and what it's doing to trade flows out of that region of the world as well. And then, of course, things like fuel prices and the upward pressure there. Uh, talk me through how that's playing out. Yeah, for us, you know, we don't do a lot of business in, in that region. So there's a couple of significant impacts for us. The first is just around driver availability for our European surface transportation business. A high percentage of drivers in, in Europe, surface transportation truck drivers do come from, from the eastern part of, of Europe and Ukraine. And so there's been some tightening of driver capacity there. You know, for us, a lot of the air freight that we do transatlantic inbound to Europe is is picking up for us because of the fact that Many of the components that come out of typically Ukraine or Russia simply can't be uh, uh, provided to the European uh, manufacturers as, as, it, as they once have been. So we in, had in terms of in <laughs> terms of fuel, you know, clearly we have seen increases in diesel fuel costs over the course of you know this year, and, and that's a significant headwind for truckers. But it's part of why we really invest in you know, paying carriers quickly, uh, negotiating fuel discounts on their behalf, so that we can keep you know keep their cash flow positive. 